Welcome to the Twilight Zone, the zone where the unknown is made known with stories involving real people and real places. On Revelation TV, the finest. If you're searching for how to master and flow in the supernatural, this is a program for you. So, call anyone you know, especially the unbeliever, who wants to make sense of the supernatural to tune in right now. Wow, hello and welcome to the program, The Twilight Zone, the zone where the unknown is made known. Yemi Balogun is my name, and you know what, tonight is going to be an interesting one, and I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Yes, I'm here alone tonight because uh, the lady of the manor is on holiday. <laughs> we're not holiday, really, she's traveled. Um, and we're going to be talking tonight about this very important topic, which says, what is the spiritual impact of membership of Freemasonry. That's an interesting one. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. You might have a question. You might have a contribution to make from your side. Whatever it is, any comments, you can send your emails to live at revelationtv.com or your text messages to the numbers displayed on the screen. I will surely read them out. And then we'll be, uh, we'll be dealing with a lot of interesting stuff tonight. And it's uh, the, the way this program is going to run tonight is slightly different because we interviewed um, a couple some years ago. They, the husband was involved in Freemasonry, and we saw the impact of that on their family members. So tonight we'll be looking at the uh, Freemasonry itself, because you hear so many things. My f grandfather on my mother's side, he was a Freemason in Nigeria. And um, after he died, he was, he was rich. But after he died, it's like everything collapsed around the family. Even the property they have in, the, in, in those days, very expensive property. Today, the property is zero. You've got family members taking a room here and there, and the, the roof is caved in, everything's not functioning. So you keep wondering what's going on. But thank God for people like us who gave our lives to Christ. We have to go through deliverance. We have to have curses broken over our lives. And at the end of the day, we, we are free. But the ones who are not born again yet, <laughs> They're there still struggling with the enemy. So tonight we'll be looking at, uh, you know, uh, Freemasonry. What is the spiritual impact of it on the life of, you know, members and their family members as well? And I have been in touch with a lot of Freemasons. In my research, I came across a book titled The Brotherhood, written by a gentleman called Stephen King. You know, what it is was that I, in my researching, I found books written by Freemasons themselves, and they had wonderful things to say about themselves, which is, which is normal. Then, on the other hand, I have books written by Christians, or sometimes ex-Masons. But the ex-Masons don't disclose much, because they've, they've made a vow they're, gonna, they're not going to reveal any secrets. But the good news is that the Bible says there's nothing under the sun that's hidden. Over the years, we, now, we have an idea what goes on in those meeting places. We know. We've seen videos on YouTube with hidden cameras. And, um, you know, so there's nothing hidden anymore. So, but the, you know, we, so, but the book that I read actually gave me a very objective understanding was that book called The Brotherhood, written by Stephen King. And I'll uh, encourage you to read the, that book in particular and it will give you a lot more information about that organization. So tonight, what we've done is that we've gone through the interview we had with this couple uh, way back. That was about two years or so ago. And uh, we did two interviews with them. And they were able to share some really interesting things about the impact of Freemasonry on the family. So, and I, and I want to encourage you to please get on the phone and tell a friend somewhere, someone that comes from that background, to please watch because they might get something out of this program that will help them to sort their lives out and move forward. So the first question I asked them was, um, I asked the lady, uh, her name is, Auntie, I call her Auntie Frida Kerr from an organization in, uh, in, Ireland, in Northern Ireland called Mid-Ulster Christian, uh, Christian, Mid Mid-Ulster Christian, uh, the, uh, Christian, Christian Helpline, yes, Mid Ulster Christian Helpline, and uh, they run a, this helpline to help other people who are 
in, the, in Freemasonry already or the ones who have actually come out of Freemasonry. So, and, and so I interviewed her and the husband as well. But here, I just got her to share with us the, you know, the, the background, how the husband got involved with Freemasonry. So I want you to just watch this video. When we come back, we'll talk a bit more and we'll go through some of the answers they gave throughout the program. So here it is. My grandfather, without going on to a lot of um, boring information, my uh, grandfather was a lecturer in the Masonic. So we had Masonic in the family background, mm. but it was one of those things that was never really talked about at all. We didn't know anything whatsoever about it. We just knew that our grandfather had been a lecturer and that was that. Uh, William's um, father was also a Freemason, mm. as was his Uncle Willie, for whom he was called. And the Uncle Willie would have been more involved in the Freemasons than William's father would have been. William's father uh, didn't take it very seriously, but obviously William's uncle, for whom he was called, uh, he was very much into the organization and had got uh, different presentations from it. And mm. he had a big mantle clock with his name that was presented to him from the organization. And that clock was passed on to William. And anyhow, William and I ended up getting, we were married in 1972. And we had three children between 1975 and 1979. Uh, but William, although having no interest in any of these organizations, uh, the year we were married in 1972, uh, later in that year, uh, Uncle Willie, as we mentioned, was very ill, and William had gone with his dad to see his Uncle Willie in hospital, as Uncle Willie requested that William go to see him. And he said to William, William, I would like you to do me a favour. And William said, yes, Uncle Willie, certainly if I can. Mm. He said, well, you know, I've always been a member of the Masonic Lodge, and he said, I know, I know I will no longer be part of that. I will not be back in the lodge again. But I want to know, would you do me a great favor? Would you uh, become a Freemason? Mm -hmm. He says, I do believe you will. And I have already put your name forward. And you will no doubt be accepted. Mm -hmm. Now, William had no idea about any of these things, but it was a deathbed, a deathbed wish of his uncle Willie, so he thought, right, he would do that. He had no idea at all what it was all about, but um, he did go along, and that's how it all started. Mm -hmm. The year that we were married, uh, he became, he was initiated into the lodge, mm -hmm. and that was more or less the start of it, mm -hmm. and he um, continued on in the lodge and um, as I say we didn't know anything about it but William it just became it was a done thing uh, if the first Monday night of the month William would have gone to the meetings and that was just it there was no arguments there was no nothing about it and he continued on and then there was a story about our son our eldest son he wasn't well and there's a whole story about that, but I'll try and keep it very brief. Okay. Uh, we did get saved in 1981, and then we can go from there. Interesting. Well, when you listen closely to what she said there, you can see that the Freemasons have a system in place to make sure the organization runs perpetually, number one. They have a way of fishing for people to join, and they always look for top guys in society to join. Because when the top guys are in there, the hungry guys will surely come along because they want to be part of the elite as they see themselves. And also, the Freemasons have a name. They call people who are not initiated. They call them profane. They're yeah, profane. So in order not to be a profane, you want to be part of these elite guys. And, um, you know, there was a deathbed wish where the old man was asking her husband to replace him. 
that's what they do a lot. My father-in-law was a Freemason, but thank God he got born again before he passed away. And I know that in those days, he was sort of nice to me and, and trying to sell me the idea that Freemasonry was good, was fine. But from youth, we knew that secret societies, <laughs> women in my family, my mom always said it, that secret societies are not good. You can't trust them, you can't go near them. So from that, from youth, I knew that it wasn't something I, I should get involved with. So, but then my father-in-law saw that I wasn't interested and being born again, it's not, it, it wasn't anything I was going to be involved in. So he had to look in a different direction, but he got someone else <laughs> somewhere along the line. But thank God, like I said, he got born again before passing away. And this uh, beautiful lady, uh, Auntie, Auntie uh, uh, Frida, uh, she's, we, she goes on to now explain to us the initiation process of her husband, how he got involved and went deeply involved. In fact, I think he got to the fifth degree, yes. But remember, when you read that book called uh, The Brotherhood, it says that majority of Freemasons across the whole world, can you imagine, it's a huge organization, majority of them don't go beyond the third degree. So the ones who don't go the third degree, beyond the third degree, they've sworn to some strange things on different levels to the third degree, but they don't still have a clue what the inner workings of the organization is. It's the ones that venture beyond the third degree that start seeing things that are heavy. But then, at that stage, they can't go back. All they have to do is keep moving forward or stay where they are. But then they know that something is amiss but they can't say to anyone, and they can't share anything about the organization. So here she's sharing with us, we know how the husband got deeply involved. Here it is. At the beginning, um, William, as I say, he hadn't a great interest in it. He didn't know really what he was getting into. And, but as time went on, uh, because it was a gathering of men all together, um, he seemed to enjoy it. And of course, uh, as the time did proceed, and he went through his um, initiation uh, period, he, and the, initi the initiation itself, and I, I would say at this stage that for I would appeal to all men or women who are thinking of joining any secret organization or any society with secrets, as they sometimes prefer, uh, prefer to be called, um, they should think very, very seriously. And please do take on board what I am saying tonight, hmm. because William would tell you himself, the first three degrees, I don't think it's appropriate for me to read out the, uh, what the wording of the degrees are of the first three degrees. They are quite horrific. And what William has always said afterwards now, since he left the organization, that in those three degrees, you actually bring a curse mm. on every part of your body. Wow. Yes, you, uh, you do. The very, the very first uh, three degrees, you don't have to go any further. And as Yemi, Pastor Yemi, as you said, mm. most men don't go any further than the first three degrees. But William did get the length of the Master Mason. And of course, by this stage, he became very enthusiastic. And really, I could say over time, that you could see where the main control was setting in, mm. because even though he didn't have any interest at, uh, interest at the beginning, as time went on, uh, yes, he started to show he got very, very committed to it, and he wouldn't have missed the night, and it was because of attendance, I think that's how it works, mm. that you can go uh, and reach the worshipful master and you can get there and say in about eight years. And anyhow, at that time, uh, but William had taken all these, obviously the first three degrees, they entered apprentice, the fellow craft, and then the master mason. Mm -hmm. and, and all of those things. And I would say for anyone listening tonight, this is what our advice would be. You know, there's one scripture that really stands out as far as any of these secret organizations goes. 
they, there's, there are hundreds of uh, secret societies or societies with secrets. There are hundreds of them throughout the world. And there are, I would, there's such a majority of men and indeed women who are oath bound to these secret societies. And yet the Bible says, and that, that's why I say the Bible is the most important thing that people should read and get to know the Lord. That is in these days in which we live and what we would stress that please, Stay out of all these organizations. And this is a scripture that we would say applies more than anything. And any man who's thinking either of going into any of these organizations or is already a member of any secret society, to think of this scripture, the Lord says in his word, above all things, my brother, swear not at all neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea or your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Now that's from James 5 and verse 12. And then you have the same scripture again in Matthew. In Matthew 5, it says, um, do not swear any oaths, let your yea be yea, or your nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Wow. You know, thank God for her life. She and the husband experienced the impact of membership of Freemasonry in their lives and the lives of their children. And that's why it's very important to talk to people who have been through it and they have a clear idea. Um, the husband got initiated and he just, he was totally sold out because he just felt that was the right thing to do. You know, friends coming together and fellowshipping together and then doing good works because the Freemasons do a lot of charitable works. They go out there, they give gifts to, you know, to uh, what do you call orphanages. They do, they, they do a lot of those works in society, just like the, um, the, this other guy is called the Rotary Club. But the Rotary, they, they are different. They're not like the Freemasons in terms of the, their operation. So, but then she, something strange happened because they, they have two children, a boy and a girl. The young boy became ill and they took him to the hospital. The doctors checked him out. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with this child. And then they were told, so a friend told them to take this boy to a, a, a minister of the gospel who prayed for people and they got healed and they took this child to him. He prayed for him and the boy was healed. And then when they went to the doctors to check out, the doctor said the baby is fine, the, the young man is fine. But then problems started with their daughter. So let's just hear from her now talking about how this, this problem came into the family and what happened. Here it is. And it's really lovely to be with you and Sylvia this evening again. It's a great privilege, and indeed we have been really blessed from the last time um, I was with you. Uh, we've had lots of contacts, and it has just been amazing, and we thank you so much for that. And the last time uh, where we left off, uh, I had uh, said about uh, William and I were married in the 70s, and then in uh, 1981 we were saved. And uh, then from 1981, uh, William was in the Freemasons and he still continued on there until uh, an evangelist came into our house uh, one night. There was a mission in our town. An evangelist came in and he uh, was talking with us and we asked him to pray with our daughter because she had been continually off school and having pains and aches and we couldn't get to the bottom of it. And anyhow, at that time, the, um, the, the, this uh, evangelist said, before I pray with your daughter, I want to ask, is there any of the men in this home tonight involved in the Freemasons? And my stepfather was there that night as well. 
and William, he spoke up and he said, yes, I am. So the evangelist said, well, that is your problem. That's what is causing all the problems with your daughter. And we had problems with our son before that. He had, uh, the Lord had raised him up as it were. He'd been very ill. I told the story about that. But the Lord had raised Stephen up and healed him completely. But now it was our daughter's turn. And this is what the evangelist said. Well, that's at the point where William said, right. Mm. I've been saying, uh, you know, all along, there was something just not right about Freemasonry. Mm. And I had jotted down some different things I'd heard along the way from different books and that I had read. But um, however, that night was the night for William that he really grasped it and he was not going to be there any longer. So as I said, this is how it finished up. I said, I never said I saw a man who moved as quick in my life. <laughs> he really gathered everything together. Yeah. We, uh, and the next day, took off his work and uh, he, we had a great big open fire and he gathered up all the regalia and he gathered up everything he had belonging to the Freemasons mm -hmm. and also the clock belonging to his uncle for whom he was called and the uncle who had asked him would he join the Freemasons and then we that night uh, or that day William put it all in the fire and burnt every last bit of it. And this is what we'd say just that before I hand over to William, I would just say at the very outset, no matter who's watching the program tonight, this is our advice to you. Being in the Freemasons or any organization at secret societies or societies with secrets, they bring a curse into your life, into the lives of your family. There's absolutely no doubt about that. We've proved that and so many other people have proven it. And tonight we would say, if you're listening and you're involved in any of these things, please, please heed the warning and get out of them, resign and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's the only way forward. <clears throat> and then, and I will tell you now, in handing over to William, uh, after he had got rid of all this, um, all the regalia and everything that he had, and of course we were saved in 1981, but after William left the Freemasons, that, that was the start. He really got in there with me. And then in 1991, we started the helpline and so on. Mm -hmm. But I let William tell you what uh, happened. Then after we did all that massive clear out and we had the big burning that day. And that's another thing too, to anyone who has uh, maybe regalia belonging to an ancestor in the attic of your house, as we've heard so many times. And then there's sickness in the home and there's different things happening where we would just say, anything like that that's lying about, please do get rid of it. You need to get rid of all these things. Time is too short, folks. And these days, Jesus is coming soon mm. and he wants a people who are separated onto himself with none of this, as I say, added baggage, mm. because that's what it is. And I am going to hand over to William. Praise God. Well, I need to remind you that this program is coming to you live from our studios in Spain. So you can participate in the discussion tonight. And uh, you can send your emails in and your text messages to the numbers displayed on the screen or your emails to live at revelationtv.com. You heard from her. They have two children. One was sick. A man of God prayed for him. He got healed. But the second, the daughter became sick as well, and the, an evangelist came visiting. Thank God for the evangelist that had discernment. He was able to discern that there was something wrong. And he asked, is there anyone here involved in Freemasonry? The, the husband said yes. And through that, they were able to break that curse over the child's life, and the, chi and the child got healed. But then we're going to talk to Uncle William now, you know, uh, who will now share with us how he got initiated and when he left, you know, what happened. So he will give us his own side of the story. So, and they both started an organization known as mid Oster Christian Helpline, much in short, mid Oster Christian Helpline to 
to help other people who are coming out of Freemasonry or who are still there that need advice to the fact from their own personal experiences that a curse comes upon the family as a result of any member of the family being involved in Freemasonry. So I've got some emails that have been coming in already. I'm going to read them in a few minutes. But then let's now hear from Uncle William, the man himself. He got to the fifth degree before he finally quit. Here it is. I joined the Masonic, it was not by choice, it was a deathbed wish mm. of this old uncle whom I was called for. But after uh, a, a few years and not really taking much interest in it, uh, I, I was uh, voted into office. And over a period of seven years then, you're, you, you, through the different offices, you get to what's called the Wishful Master's Chair. Mm. and. Uh, with that comes great prestige mm. and uh, you feel this great power that you're someone special and it was during that time then that I kept going on and on and on and uh, <clears throat> even though Frida felt that there was something not right about it I always said there's no harm in it it's only a night out with the boys mm. and because I was elevated to such a high office then, it was all the subsequent lodges give me invitations at, at, uh, to their installation dinners. And uh, I got really deeply involved. But <clears throat> uh, even Frida had been telling me about uh, the errors of Freemasonry, I couldn't grasp it. And I think that was one of the wee things that I have got to point out that whenever Frida wrote the wee book, yeah. I had no involvement in it at all, and I had said to her, you write the book so that nobody can ever say that I told you anything, mm. but I will read it through at the end, and if there's anything in it that I feel any wording that's not right, I'll tell you about it. So I read it all through, and I could find no errors in it whatsoever. Yeah. But the only thing I did say was, <clears throat> somewhere in the book, I think you need to say, and if you go to the back of the wee book, you'll see where the wee writing is, is to, sometimes it's not easy to get through to a Freemason, mm. but if you work on the wife or the daughter, <laughs> that, that definitely can make the difference because it makes difference to me. And as for saying to that evangelist who came into the house that night, no matter what I had heard before, <laughs> didn't really make a difference. But he came in and said that night, your daughter is suffering because of your involvement in Freemasonry. Mm. It was like the Lord spoke to me and said, the sins of the fathers are upon the children. Mm. And that was the breaking point for me. I thought, well, if my involvement in Freemasonry is causing all this uh, harm to my wife and to my family, it's time I wasn't in it. Yeah. And what Frida has explained tonight in the last night she was on about us burning all the regalia and I thought that was the end of it. Mm. And uh, that was the finish of it all. I thought, I'm free. I'm free. But <clears throat> two things kept happening over a period of years. Mm. And uh, my daughter and I are very, very close. And uh, it came to the time of her wedding, um, which was a very proud day for me, I must say. But anyway, uh, later on, about uh, a year after they were married, they sold their house, and the house that they were moving into wasn't quite ready, so they came and they spent some time with us. Mm. And during that time, Joanne became pregnant. And uh, everything was going fine, and then she went for her first scan and uh, they said everything was right. But then Joanne came in one day and she said to us, Mum and Dad, I feel there's something not quite right here. Mm. So she went to the hospital and she miscarried. Oh. And they told her that she would have to come back into the hospital in a couple of days' time. And during that time then they told her, we're sorry, Joanne, that you've lost this baby. But we're sad to tell you, unfortunately, you'll not be able to have any more. Oh. And that was a very, very hard time for me because I thought, 
is this all because of my involvement mm. within the Masons? Because mm. when you're saying these oaths, I must point out, you know, whenever you go into the lodge room and you're standing outside the door and you're getting all this preparation done and you laugh and you think to yourself, what am I letting myself in for? Mm. And the, the man who was uh, going to perform the initiation service on me, he said to me, don't you think nothing, you may think you look stupid tonight, but you think nothing about it because once you've gone through that door, every man inside there has gone through the exact same thing. Wow. So that was okay, I, I accepted that. But getting back to the story about Joanne, I, I really felt that this, you know, that I was to blame for all the problems that was coming upon my wife and my family. Mm. And I kept saying, you know, Lord, what have I got to do? I've, I've done everything that's been required. But anyway, to so get back to the story about Joanne, uh, Joanne got this news on a Monday. Our prayer meeting was on a Tuesday night. And usually at the prayer meeting night, I put the phone in the answering machine that we wouldn't be disturbed. But that night, because of all the anxiety and what was going on around us, I forgot. So the people arrived, and I think it was about maybe 18, 20 people in the room that night. And I was crying, and Frida was crying, and most of the people in the room were crying because of Joanne. Mm. And about nine o'clock, the phone rang. And I thought this strange, so... But anyway, I excused myself and went out and answered the phone. And this man comes on the phone and he says, Is that you, Willie? That's how they called me then. And I says, It is. Oh, he says, It's uh, Sammy from the lodge. I says, Sorry. He says, Do you remember whenever you were in the lodge? And I says, I've nothing to do with the lodge. I says, I've left that, I've resigned, I've left all that and given up all my time. Yes, he says, I know. But he says, there's one wee thing still has to be sorted out. He says, when you were a member of the lodge, you were a trustee of the hall. And your name is still on the books in Dublin as a trustee of the hall. And I need, because you're no longer a member, I need to come out to your house and get your name off the books. Mm -hmm. So that was the turning point. Although I had burned everything and renounced everything that I was involved in, really and truly, I was still a member mm. because my name was still on the books, mm. all known to me. Anyhow, this man came out and uh, I signed the form and he left. And I thought, no, that must be it. Mm. And so it was. That was the last. That was the last sticking point for me, as I was saying. For about three months later, Joanne became pregnant again. Wow! And went on. Wow. I have two lovely children. One will be eighteen tomorrow, <laughs> and the other is just fourteen years of age. Past wow. there last week. So, <laughs> God, that in the midst of all the trauma. Wow. He he, mm -hmm. what was, he thought was he was doing what the devil thought he had yeah. done for evil. Yeah. The Lord around for good. Oh. So we're very for that. And what I would say is that anybody who's listening to the story, you know, uh, think seriously because if you do read the book and you you read the degrees, mm. the first three degrees in Freemasonry, you can see all the. The, the organs of the body that you're taking a curse upon yourself mm. and I think that's what people really need to sit down and they're not only taking it upon themselves but they're taking it upon their whole family yeah. circle yeah. Yeah. so serious consideration and if you consider about the amount of brain tumours, heart disease uh, bowel cancer and all these things mm. and miscarriages is another one mm. and that's only a few, but if you take all the things that people are suffering from, some people say, oh, that's just a fact of life. Mm. We, we live with that. Mm. But if they go into their family history and find out what's down through the generations, we believe that it is a curse passed down through the missions. Mm. Wow. 
That is serious. You know, thank God for Uncle Willie's life and his beautiful wife, Auntie Frida. Yes, you can see exactly what happened. There was a curse on the family, and I know so, because you see it all over the place. For, for instance, at every degree, there's a particular curse. Uh, the, the, the comments you make, you, a curse you put upon yourself, put upon the organs of your body and everything, and it goes on to affect members of the family. And like you said, a lot of Masons do die strange deaths. Car accident, something, something's going wrong. And I remember when I was researching to Freemasonry in a country in Africa, I met one of their mem former members, and he said, look, even one of them at his, on his deathbed, he sent a message to the other Freemasons that they should pull out of it, that it is evil. It is going to bring problems in the, into their lives. And I remember a particular gentleman, he was a doctor, and uh, he was a mason in, in some African country there. The sister came to see me. She said, my brother is involved, and I want you to come and talk to him. So I just followed her to see this gentleman. The man was very rich, but very arrogant. I got there, greeted him. He said, well, he said, uh, Say, yeah, Pastor, I know my sister loves me. I'm sure she's told you about my involvement in Freemasonry, and uh, he wants to come and talk to me, to pray for me, for me to give my life to Christ. He said, Pastor, I don't want to waste your time. It's, uh, you know, I'm not interested. I stood there and I looked at him. And you know, like Jesus said, when they reject you, dust your shoes and just walk out. I just walked out calmly. You know, some years later, he became handicapped. He couldn't walk, so he was in a wheelchair. He was stuck in that wheelchair, and on a particular day, his home caught fire. No one to help him. He died in the fire. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, it said when you are hearing the word of life, and you turn your face against it, you became stiff-necked. He said there will be sudden destruction. So I just want to uh, read some emails out and just uh, keep them coming because we're going to talk a bit more. And uh, this one here is from our dear brother, Ian Lewis Sharp in Glasgow, Scotland. He said, hi, uh, Pastor Yemi. I wonder if there can be, a spiritual, be spiritual consequences for family members if a member was a Freemason. For my granddad, my dad's dad, uh, John Sharp, was a Freemason. Yes, if your granddad was a Freemason, it has an impact on the family. It comes down the line. The Bible says, God visiting the iniquities of the father unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate him. So it's going to come down the line. So if you yourself haven't been through deliverance yet, I would encourage you. You already told me you're planning to come to Spain. When you come to Spain, Try and visit the gentlemen at the Ark Church in Fuengarola so they can minister to you. Yes, you need to go through that because if you don't, the enemy can use that to limit your ministry, to mess you up so that you don't attain the height God wants you to attain. It is well with you, brother. Uh, this one says, I used to be a Freemason, but I left 40 years ago, having got to the third degree. You see, majority don't go beyond the third. So those ones don't fully understand what's going on. But in the meantime, they've put a curse upon themselves. I only joined because my foster dad and his dad was in it, both past masters. I have been a Christian three years now. I give my life to Christ and serve. I have a peace now, praise God, T.Y. Yes, yeah, so you know what? I'd like to interview you if you don't mind. Uh, if you can actually send an email to me, uh, to, uh, to info at revelationtv.com and mark it for my attention with your phone number and I'll come back to you surely. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, this one is from our brother Carl. He says, uh, Evening, Yemi. I believe the magic circle is tied to the Masons. There is a ceremony where they have corn or oil. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, there's a lot that goes with Freemasonry because there are different uh, paths in Freemasonry. Uh, there's another one here from a sister called Jean in Northern Ireland. Yemi, I clean for a couple who the husband was in the Masonic. Could that if affect me in any way? 
have tried talking to them, but they don't agree with me. No, it can't affect you because you've got nothing to do with them. In fact, you carry the light, and the, fire, the light of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit. So when you go in there, the demons are afraid of you. But in the meantime, your duty is keep praying for them and keep showing them the love of Christ. And at the end of the day, it is God that will open their eyes. Um, uh, Pastor Jamie, my, my dad's son of my granddad, John, who I am named after, his name, Ian, my dad, he died uh, at 36. He got liver cancer at 36, and he went from his eyes to his heart. Also, my grand, my grand, that's my granddad's wife, died of cancer, and so did my mom and my granddad himself. Wow. You know what? Uh, wow. You know what? <laughs> Let's talk. Maybe tomorrow. But anyway, you're coming to Spain. Very important that you actually get connected to this church in Fuengirola, and they will minister to you. I visited them yesterday, and they did, they're doing a good job. Yes, with materials from Pastor Derek Prince and some other good ministries. God bless you. Well, we're going to hear more from our Uncle <laughs> Willie now because when he left, you think these guys who say they are brothers, they hang out together, they will still, you know, show him love or reach out to him. So when he left, he met, he, he met one of them and the, and the meeting was a strange one. So here it is. <laughs> At first, it was very difficult for the members of because I was so involved, none of them could believe that out of the blue, here's this man who is at the top of this lodge, and out of for no reason, he, he's, he's quitting. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the start, they didn't really want to accept my resignation, but I was very persistent. And after that there, I had a lot of friends in the Masons. I didn't say, I wouldn't say they fell out with me, mm -hmm. but they ignored me. Mm -hmm. Some of them stopped speaking to me. Wow. And if I could tell you a wee story, there was a lovely Christian lady in her town and she had passed away. And we went to her funeral. And because she was so well known in the town, it was quite a massive big funeral. Now in our culture over here in Northern Ireland, after the committal service, there's usually a funeral tea in the church hall. Mm. So <clears throat> we all left the church and went over to the hall for tea. Mm. And because there was such a big crowd, there was more people than there was chairs. <laughs> so Frida and I sat down and this man came down uh, the hall after getting his tea and sandwiches. He came down, he found a seat and it was right beside me. And I don't think he realized it was me until he sat down. <laughs> so he turned around and he looked at me. And he turned back and he lifted his chair, <laughs> but he backed him. So, and this was a man that I was friendly with within the lodge. Oh. So that was, you know, you talk about anybody turning their back on you, but he turned his back on me that day. <laughs> okay. So that's another response that you would get. But however, I just kept going on because my wife and family are more important to me yeah, yeah. than, yeah. than yeah. people. But people would think. But it is amazing how many people have left the Masonic, mm. you know, and have asked questions about it. And if I could go on to say just just when I'm when I'm speaking, I can remember one night I was asked to give my testimony in Belfast, and uh, I was really nervous. But the Lord intervened and then gave a great testimony. And I went over this story as well about Joanne and that whole situation. And this guy stood up in the middle of the meeting and he said to me, uh, I'm not listening to any more of that because you're a false prophet. <laughs> and I later found out, but I was able to I was able to answer him. And uh, another man that was there uh, spoke up on my behalf as well. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> afterwards, his wife was a lovely lady, and she came to me afterwards and she says, I would like you to pray with me. Oh. And she collected a whole lot of the information, the leaflets and all that we had taken with us. Yeah. And the, this man, he spied her speaking to me, and he came over 
And he took all the stuff out of her hand, threw it on the floor mm. and said, we're leaving. You're not speaking to that false prophet. Yeah. <laughs> I later found out that that man was in training for the ministry. Ministry, church ministry. He yeah. was in training to be um, a pastor. What? And that was his response. Wow. And our friend, if I just, if I could just say at this point that night, um, I think he found out before the end of the, uh, during the meeting, or there was some point where when you did hear that this man was training to be a minister, mm. and our good friend that was there, a man called. Clifford Wallace and Clifford uh, and all of them, their daughter Ruth had been with us through everything that we went through. And that night, uh, Clifford uh, got up and he spoke in William's defense as well. Mm -hmm. And he said to the man, well, I would not like to be the congregation that you're going to be taking on if you don't believe um, what this man's telling exactly. you. So just one example. Mm -hmm. And that's just, unfortunately, that's the way it is mm -hmm. these days. But, uh, just a, a wee point I would like to make, you know, I, where, where I had said that I uh, ha was on this guilt trip for a long, long time about my involvement in the Freemasons and what, it had, uh, what my family had suffered for. But the man who actually invited me to take that meeting that night came to me the next day and he said to me, he says, you do not have a guilt uh, complex about being in the Freemasons because you were there for a purpose. Mm, yeah. Because mm. when anybody asks you or challenges you, mm -hmm. you have the knowledge and the authority yeah. to answer them yeah. because yeah. you have already experienced these That's things. Right. So after he said that, then the guilt trip left me Amen. and Amen. I started to move on to where we are today. Praise God. You know, the man of God was, he felt guilty of being involved in the organization. But what we have to realize as Christians is that there are times God will allow us to go into certain areas to get an understanding so that when he pulls us out, he can now use us to actually expose a lot of things happening there, which is what God has used him to do. So as a result of that encounter, he felt better and thank God. The same way God sent Moses into Egypt. He knew about the arts, the craft, the system, and then God had to send him back to pull the whole system apart. But then I asked Uncle Willie, I said, what advice do you have for Freemasons? You know, people who are still in there, and even the ones who came out, what advice would you have for them? So here's what he had to say. And I think what people need to do is think of uh, go into their family background and find out what diseases, what trauma has been down through the years and go back into the generations and see is, is, is this coming down from involvement in Freemasonry. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I found that that just gave me a perfect way out mm -hmm. without having, because as I said before, my family mean more to me than what uh, everybody else would it's think amazing. or say about yeah. me. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, there's a wee scripture in Matthew 6, verse 24, where it says, no man can serve two masters. So I, I always uh, stick, stick to that. And uh, there's, another, there's another wee part where it says, uh, you know, we, we have to swear your allegiance to the Lodge and you swear that you will never divulge the secrets of Freemasonry. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> the man that was putting me through the degrees would say to me whenever the thing was over, mm -hmm. you can take your oath on the Bible, mm. on the Quran, mm -hmm. or any other book that you feel fit to do so. Mm. But as I said, when you go in there, you're so innocent mm. and you're not really listening to what's been told to you. You just repeat mm. uh, what they, they, they say to you. You're, you're repeating everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been asked this before and I would say, you know, and the uh, uh, 
In James 5, verse 12, it says, Finally, my brethren, swear not, uh, neither by heaven nor by earth, but yes. let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I don't want to be in any condemnation. Mm. So, that's mm -hmm. that's how I feel that uh, I did the right thing. And no matter what man says against me, I just put my trust in God and believe that he will take care of me and my family. I really do believe that it needs a lot of prayer. So, prayer yeah. uh, is, is the only thing that can change these things. As I said at the beginning, Frida and other people told me about my error, mm. and, but I couldn't see any wrong in it. Mm. But it, it took something within my family to uh, break me. Mm -hmm. And then I had to go and get the curses broken over Great. Mm -hmm. me by prayer. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is men out there. There was a man that I went to see and he was a he was a minister, and uh, he gave up his ministry because he felt so strongly about the people who were involved in Freemasons, mm. and he took on a new ministry of uh, a del like a deliverance ministry where he would bring people to the house and pray for them, and he would start from the top of the head, and he would move down the body, the eyes, the throat, the heart, the chest, the stomach, and right down and, and, and release all this and of course you have to pay, pray yourself for repentance yeah, Jesus. but uh, I, I did that mm -hmm. and I believe that helped me mm -hmm. although as I say that wee bit of my name on the book mm -hmm. and Dublin was still that wee holding me mm -hmm. but I got the but it's, it's, it's the prayer and if the family keep persisting in prayer you know, the, the curses will be broken. I, even though the father, the father, this uh, person says the father is not a Christian. Well, that doesn't mean to say, you know, uh, have the, the children, you know, pray for the Lord Jesus Christ as the answer to it all. And people really need to repent of their sins and ask Jesus to be their savior, because that's the first point of release. Yeah. But the father is not saved. If, if the children are paid for and they're advised by their mother, if she's a Christian, you know, and let the father, by example, see that, you know, that she's asking the children, she doesn't want to, the children to have these curses come down because there definitely is the curses coming down. Yeah. And you would trust and pray to the Lord that he would open the father's eyes to let him see mm -hmm. the error of his ways. Yes. yes, I would say the book is authentic. I haven't read it, I've read it, but I would know that there is influence at the top. Mm. That uh, 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 a man, a man accused of something and goes to court, yeah. and that a little sign can be given by a barrister or someone to the judge, and things can turn around. And I can, I can remember even taking it down to a lower scale. I can remember going into churches and men standing in the door welcoming us in and there was always a wee sign given a non-mason didn't understand what they were doing but a freemason would have understood he's one of us or he's one of those mm. so, uh, yeah, i've experienced uh, experienced it on a smaller scale though yes well anyone can get a copy of this book free of charge just uh, send us an email, give us a ring, and we'll send it out. And this is just a very simply worded uh, booklet, and it tells you uh, in the book uh, there's the warning about the Freemasons and about the deception and about testing the spirits. And it's very, it's easy to read. And yeah, we and the um, website, you'll get our website uh, on the telephone number on the screen. And anyone who wants this book can have it. Uh, as many as you want, but we've got no so man. Thank you Thanks. so much. <laughs> wow. Praise God. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, to a lovely, lovely couple. Yeah, emails here quickly because time is really gone. Uh, this one, I don't want to mention her name. She said, hello, Brother Yemi. My name is... Mm? 
I'm married to a man who is a Freemason and my life has been hell since. I'm born again since I was 16 and is now in, and is now in my 70s. Please, Pastor Yemi, would you please call me so I can get some advice from you. I do believe my husband is demon possessed. Thanking you in advance. God bless you. Yes, I'll surely be in touch with you. God bless you. Uh, there's one here from a sister called Jill. Said my mother was involved in this movement, but I pers persuaded her to leave. I have had a lymphoma cancer and suffered treatment problems ever since. Do you think I've been afflicted by what my mom was involved in? The answer is yes. So you need to get help quickly. I interviewed a gentleman here from the Ark Church in Fuengirola, try and get hold of them, so they get their details, and then they can minister to you, or you can come over and they'll minister to you here. Amen. Um, there's another one here. Uh, do, 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 do. Where am I? Yes, there, Yemi, is it? Oh, it's Ty again. Yeah, T-Y. I've got your number, no problem. Hi, Yemi, is it true some of the higher-ups in the police are involved in Freemasonry? Oh, yes, all, all different areas of operation. There are judges, there are uh, reverends, there are, you know, archbishops, there are all sorts. They're all there, and they like even the royals. There are some royals involved. So... You know, it's, that's the way the system is. But you know what? Through prayer and the word of God, bringing light, people get set free. I want to thank you for the fellowship tonight. And you know what? We'll be back with you same time next week. And please keep on praying for us as we pray for you. So if you need any help, send an email to info at revelationtv.com and mark, me for my, mark it for my attention. God bless you and have a good night. Bye for now. See you soon.